BlackRock and Fidelity now have more than $5 billion worth of Bitcoin in their spot ETFs as they continue to eat up thousands of Bitcoin per day. At this pace, and with GBTC showing net outflows, how long will Grayscale continue to have the assets under management lead? Plus, in peak fiat news, Elon Musk and Tesla face a lawsuit from a shareholder who has just nine shares. Interest payments on U.S. debt surpasses defense spending annually. And finally, we examine the eroding trust in our institutions globally and the only viable solution, exiting the system. Welcome to the Thursday, February 1st edition of the Bitcoin ETF Daily Show. I'm Dante Cook, head of Swan Business. In this show, we discuss the latest news, events, winners, and losers, and key information surrounding these historic Bitcoin ETFs. Here at Swan, we're on a mission to educate the world about Bitcoin. So please like this video and subscribe to this channel to help us cut through the noise here on YouTube. Since our last video, the two giant asset managers, Fidelity and BlackRock, have added a cool 10 figures worth of Bitcoin. This gain shows just how quickly Wall Street is catching up to Grayscale's legacy Bitcoin fund. Although these Wall Street funds are scaling fast, BlackRock and Fidelity's funds, combined, are still about four times smaller than GBTC's fund. At the moment, the competition between Fidelity and BlackRock is like the divisional championships. To be the world champion, one of them is going to have to beat the final boss, which these days is looking like, but to be the best, you have to beat the best, even if they have dad bodies like Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. And why was Bill Hader's son in the locker room? Back to flows for a second. Yesterday was another strong day for ETFs, with an estimated 4,524 Bitcoin being purchased for roughly 198 million of inflows. And another great visual from Alessandro on Twitter we can see GBTC's outflows are flattening and only having about 188 million in outflows yesterday. BlackRock was the winner yesterday, seeing about double the flows over Fidelity, with 299 million compared to Fidelity's 119 million. In other news, our first story is peak fiat. One person with nine shares, you heard me, nine shares, filed a lawsuit against Elon Musk and Tesla. A judge ruled to strip away over $56 billion from Elon Musk, although he hit his targets and the compensation package was approved by shareholders and board members. And don't forget the fact that he added over a few hundred billion dollars to the market cap of Tesla during that window. 80% of shareholders were in favor of the compensation plan and the judge ruled against their will. This is an example showing that when you operate within the existing fiat system, you have massive counterparty risk beyond your control. In this case, the risk of arbitration, people who you did not vote for or elect are having a direct impact over the wealth that you're able to attain and amass. Like Jack Mahler's recently said, there are two ways to express power in this world, voice and exit. When voice is no longer sufficient, you have one option. Exit. Exit. Get out. Goodbye. And is it going to be hard? Yeah. But that's okay. And when the voice of over 80% of shareholders are not taken into account, what do you do? Bitcoin is power. It's a neutral store of value that gives everyday people like you and me the power to exit the system when our voices aren't heard. In Bitcoin, the shareholders are the node operators. What we say goes. As it's written in the white paper, commerce on the internet has come to rely almost exclusively on financial institutions serving as trusted third parties to process electronic payments. The idea of Bitcoin speaks to more than just commerce and payments on the internet. It's speaking to the fact that our society as a whole has come to rely almost exclusively on institutions to grant us power and rights that we used to have as citizens ourselves. Events like these are quickly eroding trust. In another instance of eroding trust around the world, two of the largest economies in Africa are under huge financial strain. Nigeria devalued the Naira by over 30% the second time in the last eight months, with Egypt under pressure to devalue its currency as well. In both cases, the government didn't ask the people for their permission to dramatically reduce their purchasing power or their living standards. Currency devaluation is a crime against people, and it's caused by central banks in the mixing of the state and the money. The central bank system that we operate under today, right? if you can print money that everyone else is forced to use, you're effectively confiscating their time. So uh, it's a less overtly violent, invisible system of time theft. It is still, it's the same type of mechanism, essentially. 
We're talking, I think the numbers were 23 and a half billion hours stolen per year for the past 40 years by just the Fed. So how much human time was the Fed printing essentially? That's why I think the, the, the moniker pyramid scheme for fiat currency is correct because it is this hierarchical system of network marketing where the monopolists at the top are basically confiscating wealth from those lower down. And to me, it's just the, the deeper I look, the more I see Bitcoin as something fundamental to breaking this habit, if you want to call it, of people enslaving people. People believe that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were designed to replace currency. They weren't. They were designed to replace institutions and mainly our banks. Back to the U.S. In another attempt to show you the differences between fiat and Bitcoin, FTX expects to pay its customers in full in its liquidation. However, customers will not be paid in kind in Bitcoin, but rather in fiat terms, with the average price of their repayment being about $16,000 per Bitcoin when the price now sits above $42,000. In closing, the U.S. Treasury just confirmed what we already knew. Spending on U.S. debt interest payments is now larger than the entire defense budget and will soon surpass the entire Social Security budget. Future generations will have no choice but to opt out into a better system because the benefits promised to the previous one will no longer be there for them. In a few decades from now, it will be shocking to think that we all watched a press conference for one man like Jerome Powell where his words will impact the lives of billions of people around the globe. Well, I say it will be shocking. It'll only be shocking if we opt out of the system with Bitcoin, a decentralized money that doesn't receive its power from our federal institutional systems. In a daily reminder to zoom out, Bitcoin's annualized return has averaged over 44% over the last seven years, while the other major asset classes in the world have only averaged 5.7% in their returns. The seven board members of the Federal Reserve System serve a 14-year term. Be patient. Invest in Bitcoin. And when the time comes to opt out of the system and exit, you'll be ready. Be sure to tune in on February 6th at 10 a.m. to the Cafe Bitcoin Spaces on Twitter, where the man, the myth, the legend, Swan CIO and head of Swan Mining, Hafa Zaguri, will be on to discuss Swan Mining live for one of the first times in public. Make sure you're following the Swan Media handle on Twitter and set a reminder so that you get a notification. You aren't going to want to miss this. And with that, high five and happy stacking. This is Dante Cook with Swan.com. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh.